Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? If you're good, I am great. So for starters, this vlog's probably gonna be kind of a short one. I have some family in town and been doing a lot of, you know, things that aren't necessarily garden related. So uh, this is gonna be a shorter one. Still probably gonna be kind of long though, cause you know, I'm long-winded and I ramble. But I started this week off, I went to a wedding show cause I have family members getting married in the summertime. So I saw like lots of really pretty light fixtures and some cool flower arrangements, like really fancy cakes and things like that. So maybe I'll have some clips in here of that. If I do, then I probably will have just, you will have just seen it more than likely. So that's the first thing I'm doing. And then I need to put some new shelves up that I got in the mail. They're not really shelves. You'll see what that's all about. In addition to putting those shelves up, it's also supposed to get warmer here in a few days, like into the fifties and sixties. And then it's supposed to plummet and snow and get icy again. But when that happens, I'd like to go outside and have a look at some ferns and see how the garden's doing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Just kind of saying hi, doing a quick intro. And, uh, yeah, so that, that's that. Let's let's get going. Oh, you're so cute. Buggy, you're so cute. You're the reason I can't take the Christmas tree down. It's too adorable. Um, the plastic's working. 90 degrees, the humidity is obviously still way too low, but it's actually improving, slowly. As this water warms up, that really should help a lot with the humidity, but 90 degrees, that is almost too much. But uh, I, it's 90 over here where I am. There's a cool side where it's, I would guess, probably 84 maybe over there. So things are spread out. This means I'm gonna have to do more watering. I'm not complaining, just thinking out loud here. More watering, better airflow because molds, mildew, fungus, all those things, much more prosperous in the heat. Uh, but dry heat, not so much, but I don't want dry heat. I want, I need humidity. And um, flowers are responding. You know, this Zygo has had awesome flowers on it for a pretty long time, but the temperatures got high enough that it went, oh. Well, that's different, and so it's dropping its flowers, which is fine, because it's probably due to do that fairly soon anyways. Doo doo. I'm, you guys, the bubble worked. I'm so relieved. I have never gotten temperatures in here over, I think the hottest ever was like 81. So, uh, I'm super happy. I'm, it's a little bit too warm. It could go down a couple degrees, but this is fine for now. It probably will go down a couple degrees pretty soon. It's also... 56 degrees outside so that's part of the reason it's so warm if it were 30 something then it would probably be i don't know it got up to 82 or 84 in here a few days ago and it was 20 something outside so i don't know there there does seem to be like a method in how i place my heaters i'm finding the right places to put them so that the air is all kind of flowing together not dissipating so it can continue to warm things and but yeah okay so that's it i need to water and uh, at some point, when actually I'm gonna drop the temperature a little bit, I'm gonna rearrange everything over where you can't see, but it's a mess and I got some new supplies in. I'm gonna try and fix it up and make it more functional. Oh, these breakers are constantly tripping, which, you know, means there's too much plugged in on them, but there's not. I've done the math. I think something, does anybody know electricity? Cause something isn't right here. There's one 750 watt heater hooked in onto that breaker and about 300 watts of bulbs that shouldn't be tripping it. Because there are other breakers that have like, you know, multiple heaters on. I don't know, but need to go fix that. You're very loud. Really enjoying the zipper door here. Comes in very nifty. Okay. Uh... Oh, that's not going to work. There we go. Hey, 49% humidity. Not bad. 50%. You know, the irony there <laughs> is that the air is so dry when I woke up today that my eyes are really messed up. Big time. Let's see. That should do it. I've heard you can replace these, like put in a 100 amp science thing i don't know got that taken care of vandas are soaking so now uh, let's go get some uh, oh hi what's going on toby 
dogs in the bubble. There's no doggies in the bubble. So I got a couple big packages in the mail. I already started to open them. I know what's in them. These are tables. Folding tables. Four feet long. I think two feet wide. That looks like two feet. You know, legs that pop out. Like so. So, you know, they're just like the kind where you slide the little thing down to lock them in place. What I like about these is that the legs are adjustable and they're long and flat. So I can set these on top of the uh, essentially styrofoam ground that's in there without it puncturing holes. So the weights can be distributed more evenly since it's, you know, like this instead of just little peg legs. And I can adjust the height. I think it said they go to like 30 inches maybe. I'm not positive about that one. And it's the description online said that they had like a 1500 pound or 1200. They had a very heavy weight capacity so they should be pretty sturdy. Plenty sturdy for just having some plants on them. That's for sure. And so what I'm planning on doing here is basically I'm going to put one on top of the other. And they were relatively cheap. These were under 40 bucks a piece. I couldn't find any type of plant stand that was really versatile as far as being able to adjust it easily. That also had a high weight capacity that was also something I could fold up and put away for the rest of the year when the plants aren't in the garage. So I think this was the way to go because with these I can just fold them down flat and then I store them up there where things get stored the rest of the year. So they won't take up space, you know, I won't have to set up shelves every single winter. So I like that. I think this is going to work, but so, okay, you can't really see through the plastic through the camera, so we'll just come on through here. And then, uh, put a, I haven't put a door in right here because I'm still working on getting this piece of plastic right here put all the way up here. I'm having trouble figuring out how I'm going to get up there. I, obviously, I'll use a ladder, but it's more a matter of wrapping the... It's complicated and boring. Don't worry about it. So come over here. Peel the plastic back. Here's what's going on on this side of the grow bubble. My little bubble. And my orchids over here. And then I have plants on these shelves right there. There we go. See them? Right there. And then this table right here is actually broken. It's collapsed. The plants are all falling towards the middle. And I don't have these arranged in a way that I like. All the succulents and cactus really should be over here. It's slightly cooler over here. The lighting's not as great, but I have lights that I can install here to fix that. I remember what I was just saying. I saw some walking up and down my driveway, and it freaked me out. Um, okay, so the, these are all more tropical, and they're not doing great right here. That's partially because of some aphid problems. But I can spray those. That, that's not really that big of a deal. So I'm going to move the tropicals over here, bring the cactus and succulents over here, the cactus closer to where things are drafty because they can take that winter cold better as long as they're dry. Succulents over here, I have some lights I'm going to install. May not get to that part in this video because this alone is going to be tricky because I'm working with a pretty tight area. Things are kind of crammed over here. And these new tables are, I think, wider than this one. They're going to stick out further. So yeah, that's what's going on right now. So the tables are going to end up set up over here. The shelves, this whole thing's going to end up being slid down here. Then I'm going to move the tropicals over to the tables, right? I think that, yeah, I think that, 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 la, la, la. yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I got, this is the old table. I got it all cleaned off. You can see how the middle's kind of bowed in there. See that? It just couldn't hold the weight. And not all that sterile because this is like cardboard or something and you can see it's absolutely covered in mold so I am pretty happy to be getting this out of here not really looking to be breathing mold spores while I'm in my bubble so that just happened had a bunch of succulents in there sitting there my head hit it and now they're there I see a bunch of leaves we can pick up and propagate so that's a plus Things are coming along. I was actually able to slide this, which was nice. I pulled this styro over here because it was kind of in the way of things back there. And I have the, there's a Vanda stuck under here. Whoops. Okay, and I have this piece of greenhouse plastic here, which I actually got to use to put on top of one of my other fish tanks. I still need to cut it up. 
But it's also coming really nifty because I have it coming, it's draped here. It's protecting electrical things from getting water on them and like my table saws and all the power tools are kind of protected here. So that's nice like that. And I'm just gonna get the table set up over here and start, you know, fixing the chaos that I've created. Okay, so I got the first one set up. I pulled it out to its full height. I have to say though, it really is too tall like this. I feel like it'll topple over with weight up high on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it down a notch. This is about three feet high, which is awesome, but that's not, probably not going to work for this. Wow, this is bad lighting. I'm really sorry. All right, I dropped that down so it's shorter and put the next one on top and I didn't raise this at all. That's just as short as this one will go. I think this is good because now I still have my storage space underneath for dormant pots and things like that. And then the this shelf right here, I'm probably going to be using for seed propagation. And for now, I'm probably going to have succulents in there and I'll think I'm going to have to string a light in there. And then on top, unfortunately, a lot of stuff that's going up there is kind of tall. So I'm going to have to figure this out because I don't want them blocking the sun from the windows or from these grow lights. But heavy things towards the back to help counterbalance the weight but yeah I think overall this is much better I'm happy with this also when those succulents fell down my echinoceros popped it popped my cactus popped well live and learn right don't I don't know what what happened here is what it is onward with this all right so uh, this is close to done you can see these hibiscus and see why I needed to do this. They weren't getting enough light. They were too close to the draft of the cold. They're going to do much better here near the vandas and the orchids. They're going to receive more water overall, even if it's just runoff from the vandas. So that should be great for them. I need to readjust these lights. I need to install more lights. I'm not going to be doing that in this video. And I have low light plants down here, which still need some light, so I have to work that out need to reorganize. It's really just organization at this point, which I think is pretty boring. So I'm just, you know, going to say this is done and you'll see what it looks like probably next week because it's, I'm going to take my time on it. So there's a lot of other things I need to do, but the bones, the bones are set up and I'm happy about that. Things are a little bit narrow in here. Uh, that's partially because these orchid stands are sticking out kind of far. So I might be able to wedge those around a little bit. I don't know. We'll, we will see, but there are some other things that I want to do today. So at least these are out of the way and things are getting more tidy. I'm making more room for plants, which is fun. I need some space to do some propagating this year. It's been a few days, <laughs> things are kind of busy, but it is unusually warm outside. This is a can of something exploded. Don't worry about it. A lot of recycling to take out. It's kind of gloomy outside. But it's 61 degrees, which is awesome. It's supposed to get really cold and snow tonight, though, so got to take advantage of it while we can. And I thought this might be a good opportunity to go ahead on out here and just have a quick look at things, how things are doing. I trialed a lot of different ferns this year because I've been trying to find a fern that would grow well for me in the hot, hot, humid summers and as well in the winters, even ideally something that would be evergreen. These are kind of two different beasts, so... That's a hard thing to find in one fern. I tried holly ferns, tassel ferns, cinnamon ferns, ostrich ferns, and um, the uh, autumn brilliance ferns. And there are even, there are several more, some maiden hairs and whatnot. But so far I did notice that some of them are still green. And like I said, we were negative eight not too long ago. So I want to go actually have a look and see which one stayed green. Oh, it's so sad and gloomy out here. So sad. Okay, so who remembers the Serenity Garden? Well, here it is in its winter state. Bamboo is looking okay. This is the Fargasia Dracocephala rufa. Doing fine. This fern right here, not looking great. This was a tassel fern. So, uh, did okay in the heat. Not so much the cold. Over here, another tassel fern. Still doing alright, but not great. This is also a tassel fern. 
pretty much the same thing across the board with those. These, however, these are the Brilliance Ferns, the Autumn Brilliance Fern, Dryapteris, ooh, Ethrosaura, I think? Uh, and then Brilliance. The Brilliance part just means that they're supposed to have a nicer foliage in the fall time. I really didn't notice anything superb with the foliage, but uh, these are still looking pretty good. And they did great in the heat of the summer. I'd say these are the winners. Everything else has died back in dormant. So, negative eight. Not bad. And this is also probably kind of a warm spot, but they're in a pot. And this pot, I mean, it's frozen solid. So, this is my fern of choice. Probably next year I'm going to be getting a whole bunch more of these guys. Now, this tassel fern, however, is looking much better. But it's in a more protected spot. So, there's really no surprise there. Needle palm, looking fine. Zero protection. Doing great. And down here, these Semper Vivums. Looking okay. I may go ahead and move these to a drier spot, though they're a little bit more sheltered. And while the cactus are kind of eh, they're a little bit limp. That's not great. So they got a lot of moisture on them when we had a snow and I moved them back, but that may have been too much for them. We'll see what happens. And here is a needle palm looking not that great, but it should be okay. I can see its cover got blown off here. I think it'll be okay. Negative eight's a bit much. Cause that cold came out of nowhere. It's not always how cold it gets, but how fast it gets cold. Let me keep an eye on it. See how it does. I would say the kales and cabbages met their match. <laughs> They're not looking great. And this is that planter I did with the crystals and everything. It's looking fine. The juniper, the blue star junipers, kind of sad. Over here I have another planter that this video hasn't come out yet, but... Holly's not looking too hot. These guys are pretty dry. I might go ahead and water them, but it's supposed to start raining here in a little bit, so I'll watch the forecast. Oh, and despite this pot being sold as all weather and fine to leave outside in the wintertime, one of those frost-proof pots, it cracked. So that kind of sucks, is what it is. Holly's, they have some tip damage. Magnolia's looking okay. And the winter berries have seen better days. These pots are frozen solid, so... I'm a little surprised they're even doing that well. My Lewisias, though... They're enjoying the cold. They're really enjoying the cold. So I haven't really been messing with them. When it's getting too terribly cold, I've just been kind of doing that. Otherwise, I'm leaving them be, and they seem to be liking that. I have to say, 61 degrees feels really nice. I was getting very hot and toasty in there. Which is great for the tropical plants, but whew, not so much me. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how those ferns are looking. Close you up. You know, I've been trying to find the right fern to keep in my garden for years. But it's just with the super, super hot climate, it can be difficult to find a fern that's tolerant of that heat and is also really cold hardy let alone heat tolerant and so cold hardy that will remain evergreen down to zero degrees or negative temperatures. And ferns are such a diverse group of plants. There are hundreds and thousands of different types of ferns. Tropical ferns, temperate ferns, very, very cold hardy ferns. And uh, I've tried a lot of them. I've, and I've grown the Brilliance fern before. You know, it's not a relative, it's not a new plant by any means. But I've always wanted ferns that get really, really large and tall, so I've tried things like the cinnamon ferns and ostrich ferns, which do okay here, uh, especially in the heat, and the ostrich ferns can take a decent amount of sun, like a pretty hefty amount of sun, but they're not evergreen. And it's just nice to have something evergreen that's not a pine tree or a unanimous or a holly. So I'm happy with that. They're a little bit more of a low-growing plant, but I think I'm going to get several more of them because ferns add a lot of textures. There's just something about having ferns mixed into a garden that makes it look more lush and inviting to me. Not to everybody else, just talking about me and why I like them. That texture, the dark green foliage, sometimes light green foliage. There's the lady ferns, there's the painted lady fern that has, you know, multicolored foliage and whatnot. Sometimes they have glossy leaves, sometimes their leaves are kind of dull, sometimes the leaves are curly, sometimes they have complex leaves, sometimes not. They're just awesome. Some of them are epithetic, so they'll grow up in trees, not where I live. But that's pretty cool. Some of them get massive. There's the tree ferns that get, you know, the huge trunks on them. 
tiny ferns, giant ferns, medium-sized ferns. I have ferns out here as well, you know, tropical ferns and whatnot, so they're just awesome. I'm definitely going to be getting more of the Brilliance ferns next year. Not to mention, they're very versatile plants. There's so much you can do with ferns. You can use them in fairy gardens, you can use them in a tropical garden, you can use them... Maybe not a Mediterranean garden, but what am I trying to say here? A temperate garden. A uh, mountain. You know, if you live in the mountains, they will do well with those cool temperatures. I mean, depending on the variety. So, you know, some people see a fern and maybe they think of a fairy garden. Sometimes maybe they'll think of, like, mountains and whimsy. I They do remind me of the tropics, and that's largely because of the palmitate-type branches they have. Like a palm tree, palmitate. And I love how the leaves uncurl from the centers and come out. They're just so neat. I think I've said that like 30 times already. Speaking of ferns, I found my bird's nest fern. I hadn't really lost it, but it was kind of tucked away a little bit and was a little bit dry. But it looks so much better. Sadly, this is it looking better. We had that cold and I kind of sees watering. But it's recovering okay. It has some old foliage down below that needs to be trimmed out. Not a big deal. But I just hung this up next to the waterfall last night. I gave it a good drink, put it there, and it is really perking up just in probably 12 hours. That's pretty awesome. I love the asplenniums, the bird's nest ferns. That's a pretty broad thing to say because there's like, I think, 700 or something different forms of asplenniums, but this is just a standard bird's nest fern from Ikea. I don't know what variety it is, probably the natus, nidus, if I had to guess. Obviously not a specimen. <laughs> it's definitely responding well to the warmer temperatures and the much more consistent moisture it's receiving now. Being near this waterfall where it gets occasional splatter that comes up from the water, that's also why I have this Nepenthes over here, because it gets splatter occasionally to keep it nice and wet. So I don't have to constantly make sure that it's getting clean water. It's just always doing it. I still water it, but not that often. It's doing pretty well on its own. It's got new pictures popping out, getting pretty tall. I should actually probably even repot this guy into something bigger and start supporting it because it's getting really long. It's really growing very fast. I'd say it's probably put on a good two feet of growth since... I picked that guy up um, early last summer, maybe? Gosh, it might have even been the summer before. But it's put on about two feet of growth since I got it. Pretty awesome. Sword, or I keep wanting to call this a sword fern. It's not. Bird's nest ferns. They, well, since I was talking about, you know, epithets and whatnot, you know, you find these growing up in the trees and in rock crevices, similar to our orchids great plants. And there's a variety called like crispy or crispy wave that stays a little bit smaller and the leaves have more texture to them. Those are really neat too. And they're supposed to be clean air plants, which is fun, I suppose. So, but you know, they don't have the palmitate type leaves like a normal fern does, but they're long and sword-like, which I think is why I keep wanting to call it a sword fern, but it's not a sword fern. Sword fern's a whole different type of fern, which I've also have tried sword ferns outside. They do okay, but not in the winter so much awesome plant. That's all just a quick little thing about my bird's nest fern. There it is. Say hi everybody. I also kind of like having it back here because when I'm doing videos out here on my little table, I'll be able to kind of watch it grow and do much better. It does need a repotting. Right now it's just in like the peat that it came in, which is all right. But ideally I would have it in a more loose mixture something that's not quite as water retentive because like I said they like moisture but not necessarily to be drenched at all times so this is going to be kind of a trial and error thing here but man I, th I know this looks terrible but yesterday it was completely limp you know said I went almost two weeks without watering I watered everything very lightly but it just wasn't up to this guy's standards and it got hot so it was looking okay and then yesterday it got up to 91 degrees in here and then it just went it just fell right down. Wasn't having it. Nope. Was not having it at all. But back to what I was just saying about watering and how things were on the dry side here and very cold. And I had mentioned the Eureka Palms. I wasn't sure if they were overwatered or underwatered, but I went ahead and I 
take a really big stick, I took a big stick, I should say, and I jammed it all the way down to the bottom of the pots, pulled it back up, it was dry. So they were dry, and I went ahead and I gave them a very, very, very heavy watering, and they perked right back up. You know, that 90 degrees is pretty intense change when things have been so cold. I did turn one of the heaters off, actually, because that was a bit too warm. 75 to 84, I would say, is the more ideal range I'd like to be in. But, I mean, it was cool to see that I could get things that warm in here, that the the bubble and the plastic's working and whatnot. Uh, another update would be for the Enset Morelii, which is the red obsidian banana. It's too big for this space. It, it has been for years. And when I moved this guy in, you know, I cut the entire top off. There were some people who were kind of flabbergasted about that. But in order to move it in this pot, you know, it's in a 24 or 30-inch pot. I want to say it's probably a 24-inch pot. The, the foliage is so heavy that it bends the trunk. It's not good for it. So I just cut the entire top off. And then it puts out like a new leaf every week. So I have to go in and keep trimming those. This is a few years old, so it could flower for me soon. I actually hope it doesn't because they are monocarpic, meaning once they flower, then they die. So I would prefer for it to not, because it's a really big, pretty plant. But, you know, we will see. That's a, it's the, it's a 12 foot ceiling in here and the leaves are bent. So I'd say it's probably 14 or 15 feet high. And in the summer, I can move it out into more direct sun and hopefully thicken that trunk up a lot. That would look really nice. These look so awesome with the really fat trunks on them. Okay, and then this guy right here, doing well. What are you? Camellia patens. I don't know why that escaped my tongue. I've been growing these guys for years and I love them. It's doing okay. It's flowering, which is a good sign, which isn't even necessary. It doesn't need to be flowering. Uh, these can go completely dormant for you as long as you keep them dry. With, you know, maybe a monthly watering. They'll lose their foliage. This was a variety that's supposed to stay smaller. I think it's called Firefly. I did a whole video on these guys a while ago, so the name of it's in there. But I want to say this is Hamelia Patton's Firefly. And it's said to stay smaller, so we will see. It's the only reason I didn't let it go dormant. I wanted to just keep on going and see how big this guy will get. Because if it does stay small, then I think that this would be a really good candidate for bonsai. Again in this pot, the Passion Flora. Pass Flora doing well. This is the Incense Passion Fire, which I also did a video on. I wasn't sure how that was going to do, but it's doing okay. I mean, it's got, you know, nice, heavy, lobed leaves. No flowers, but I expect that there will probably be some flower buds on it fairly soon, because the hibiscus is also starting to put out little bitty tiny baby buds. And I thought I saw some growth somewhere on here that looked like they will probably put out buds as well. So that'll be fun. That's going to be a very intense scent to have in this confined area. And that Xanadu philodendrum's doing great. That needs to be repotted so bad. It's in like a little six inch nursery pot. It has been for a very long time. It's been doing really well, but uh, yeah, I would like to repot it. I'd like to do something kind of fun with it, like put it in a cocoa line basket, maybe even upside down because they run. It'll put out runners and that should end up covering the bottom of that basket and it would look really neat. So I might do that with it uh, in the next few weeks. We will see how how the weather behaves, the temperatures stay stable. If things stay warm, which I'm definitely hoping that they do, but if things stay nice and warm, then I'll start doing some repotting things. I don't want to repot these guys if the temperatures are going to be in the 50s and 60s in here. But if I can maintain the temperatures into the 70s and preferably low 80s, then repotting would be just fine. So time will tell when it comes to that. And I also wanted to do a quick update on the Silver Satin Pothos. It's only been a few days since that video was out. Uh, the reason I call it Silver or Satin is because with the way the weather has been kind of wonky, the variation is very uneven, so it's hard for me to say for sure what it is. The Silver Pothos has very heavy variegation, whereas the Satin is more speckly and spotted, like this guy. But I could have sworn there were several of these for sale. I should start with that. And uh, I, you know, looked through them and noticed that, like, none of them had really even taken root. They were just cuttings jammed into these pots, which is stupid and irresponsible of the sellers to do that. But Costa Farms, you know... That, that happens sometimes. Big, you know, mass producers, you know, sometimes 
things get away from them. But the one I picked was the one that had the most growth and root on it. There were others that had labels, and I'm almost positive that those said Silver Pothos on them. But the label doesn't necessarily matter because somebody did comment down below saying that they picked one of these up from Lowe's as well. It said Silver, or it said Velvet, Velvet Philodendron, and that's a completely different plant. They look fairly different, so things get mislabeled as it is. But it's either a Silver or a Satin. I don't know which. I would say probably a Satin, but you can see the newer leaves do have heavier variegation, so could be the Silver. That's really not even what I wanted to touch on. What I wanted to touch on was some care aspects with these if you pick them up in a condition like I got mine where it barely has any roots. Yes, once established, this is a super easy plant to grow. But the first few months, if you notice that the one you got basically are just cutting shoved into a pot, which is likely the case if you get them from Lowe's or Home Depot or just any mass store where they've been produced in mass. If that is the case, they will need to be watered frequently, but in small amounts because they don't have the root development. They don't have roots all over the place to take up a lot of water. So if you only water it, you know, give it a decent watering, maybe I can't say for sure because climates and lighting and airflow varies, but let's say you let it dry out for three or four days in between waterings. This is not going to have the stores in it to be okay with that. They're going to need more frequent watering to get those roots to develop. Once the roots have developed, it'll be different and not quite as much of a mess. So if you do pick up one of these plants and it's not doing well for you, that could be part of the reason. Just light, frequent waterings. Let them dry for no more than, I would say, a day or two in between, and it should be fine. But the main thing is getting its roots out. And once it, they root out and fill out their pot, they're much easier to grow. I meant to mention all that in the video, but I got distracted. It happens a lot because it was so shiny. It's really hard to stay focused when you're looking at something so shiny, sparkly, and pretty, isn't it? Yeah, but so that's pretty much all I have for this week. It's kind of a boring week, shorter vlog. I'm sorry about that, but like I mentioned last week, I do have family in town, and the rest of everything I'm going to be doing out here is really tidying and pruning and sweeping and watering. I'm not doing any fertilizing or anything that... Really nothing worth talking about. All kind of boring stuff, so figure may as well just end things here. So on that note, I'll list all my social medias down below in case you're interested in following. Send me pictures. Don't forget to leave that thumbs up. It helps the videos a lot. Comment down below. I love talking to y'all. I hope everybody's doing well. And as always, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.